This presentation involves a deep dive analysis into the aged care residential services industry or RAC sector. It will involve examination of the most recent labour market information to provide an understanding of the following. According to the Australian Government's aged care workforce census, as of 2019, there are approximately 366,100 workers delivering aged care services in Australia, the majority, 68%, working in the residential aged care sector. This represents an increase from previous years and underscores the growing demand for aged care services in Australia. The number of people accessing aged care services in Australia has been steadily increasing in recent years. According to the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, as of June 2020, approximately 1.3 million people receive aged care services. This number is expected to continue to grow as the population ages and demand for aged care service grows. The Australian aged care industry has been experiencing remarkable growth driven by population ageing and dem other demographic factors. According to IBIS World, the industry revenue is expected to increase at an annualised 3.9% over five years. Factors leading to this growth include increasing number of older Australians requiring at care, government funding and subsidies and a growing trend towards consumer driven care. The Producti Productivity Commission's 2021 report tells us government expenditure on aged care work on aged care, workforce services is increased from 13.2 billion in 20 in 2003 to 04 to oh, maybe I should say in 2003 to 2004 to an estimated 25.4 billion in 2019 to 2020. Private funding also plays a significant role in aged care services. Private expenditure or residential care services has been increasing at a faster rate than government funding with direct contribution to services as well as indirect contributions such as employment generated by the sector. This contribution is expected to grow in the coming years for the demand for aged care services increases. The aged care industry is part of Australia's broad and rapidly growing healthcare and social assistance industry and a significant con contributor to regional and rural e e economies. Sorry guys, I'll get that right. <laughs> it operates across residential care, home care and community based care and interfaces with services provided through the health system and disability and social supports. Aged care service provision is a growth industry. The Pro Productivity Commission to, in 2011 predicted that 3.5 billion Australians will be accessing aged care services every day by 2050, requiring a workforce, workforce of almost 1 million direct care workers. Uh, I think we're going to get rid of that slide. There are three main types of aged care services. This pr presentation will be looking at residential care. I've got to put a circle around residential care. The list of aged care providers in Australia is vast and growing steadily. It is a highly competitive market with larger pr providers asserting their dominance. It is worth noting that new providers in the aged care market is increasing rapidly and offering innovative business and operating models enabled by new technology, which of course suggests that the workforce within this space should prepare for a developing skill set and entrepreneurial, I can't say that word, mindset to meet the ever-changing nature that this sector is yet to become, is set to become. According to the 2020 Aged Care Workforce Census report, there was a total of 366,100 people working in the aged care industry. Of these employed in direct roles in residential care. 70% were professional care workers, followed by 23% registered nurses and 7% allied health professionals, which could include an extensive list of health care and rehabilitative specialists. The breakdown follows a similar trend within the home care service provision with 80% of workers in the home care space working in personal care, but only 6% are registered nurses, which is a significant deviation from resident, residential care and 6% working in allied health. There are many educational pathways for people who aspire to work in the aged care sector in Australia. Australia. Here are some of the most popular educational pathways and then required soft and technical skills. I was going to read a lot more there, but I think um, We'll just leave it at that. Let me know what you think. The Department of Health 2020 Census of the Aged Care Workforce compared data from 2012, 2016 and 2020. This data showed that the total residential care workforce in 2020 has increased by 12% from 2016 and 32% in 2012. Across the whole sector in 2020, there were 22,000 job vacancies. Over half of these vacancies are for personal care workers, closely followed by registered nurses. 
From November 2019 to November 20, a staggering 52,588 employers left the sector, with personal care workers always being the majority of each care service. This shows that retention rates is of concern for the aged care workforce. The age of the workforce is gradually getting younger, where in 2016, 35% of the workforce was under 40, compared to 52% in 2020. But there is still work to be done to attract younger Australians to this sector. 86% of people in care roles identified as female, which has stayed steady since 2016. This shows there is more to be done to attract males within the aged care, within aged care. Due to Australia's ageing population and living longer than ever before, it is predicted that the need for care workers will increase by 28% by 2026. According to Labor Market Insights, it is the occupation that the largest projected growth in Australia. Therefore, there is a huge need to address the workforce shortages and strategies to attract more people to want to work in this sector. According to the Bolton Clark Diversity Framework, 2017 to 2025, or 2025 I should say, our society is more diverse than ever and the importance of a diversity framework is not to be underestimated. One of the primary purposes of the diversity framework is to encourage and support the wider organisation to build capacity in diverse diversity to embed workforce inclusion and consumer participation in policy, service and product design and delivery. Bolton Clark is committed to reflecting the same diversity in their client resident population and their workforce. They believe a diverse workforce contributes to better business outcomes through higher level of innovation, creativity, improved team engagement and risk management. In the aged care diversity, in the aged care diversity framework, one of the six strategies for achieving outcomes for consumers is supporting a proactive and flexible system. A proactive and flexible aged care system that responds to the needs in of existing emerging diverse groups, including an increasingly diverse aged care workforce. I'm going to take that part out. The action required by aged care providers is enable, engage with their local community and stakeholders to identify emerging needs and how service delivery models can be adapted to embrace those needs, including how the organisation's workforce demonstrates an inclusive approach to care. The Aged Care Workforce Strategy Task Force have developed a workforce strategy grouped into 14 strategic actions. One of the strategic actions is implementing new attraction retention strategies for workforce. In 2018, the task force, with the support of Aged Care Peak Organisations and some large providers, okay, I really need to cut this down. I will do that because that is far too long when I'm reading. The number of direct care workers employed in um, uh, in RAC facilities who identified as Aboriginal and, and or Torres Strait Islanders in 2020 was 3,298. This represents 1.9% of the total direct work workforce in these facilities, a slight increase from 1% in 2016. For facilities with more than 3.3% Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander clients, the proportion of Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander nurses increases from 1.5% to 2.3%. A similar trend was seen for PCWs and allied health workers. The majority of Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islanders are PCWs, 78% that, uh, with 19% as nurses and 3% working as allied health professionals. The Royal Commission into Aged Care Quality and Safety found that older Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people prefer to receive aged care service and support from other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. It was recommended that the Australian Government should develop a National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Aged Care Workforce Plan in order to respect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's wishes and help them deliver culturally safe aged care. The framework should include targets for the training and employment of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across a full range of aged care roles and the necessary funds should be available to implement the plan and meet the targets. The number of direct care workers who identify as culturally and linguistically diverse distribution background in 2020 was 49,475 or 35% of the total RAC direct care workforce. This is an increase from 26% in 2016, although the 2016 distribution included agency subcontract roles, whereas 2020 responses did not differentiate these roles. These proportions of CAL workers increases in facilities of high proportion of CAL residents from 30% to 57%. The majority of CAL staff and PCWs with 70% um, with 24% nurses and 4% allied health professionals, which is broadly in line with the overall composition of RAC direct care workforce. Providers have high 
providers that have a high proportion of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander clients have made m m direct care workers who identify as Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islanders. Simil similarly, 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 can't say that word, need to practice that one. Providers with more clients from cow backgrounds have more direct workers who identify as being cow background. There are numerous factors driving change for educational and vocational providers. These include the Australian Royal Commission into Aged Care. The Royal Commission has, ne has made nearly 150 recommendations professionalising the aged care workforce through changes to education, training and wages, labour conditions and career progression. New funding for training. The government will provide funding from 2021 to 22 for 33,800 additional training places for existing and new aged care workers as part of the job training extension and expansion. Urgent need to retain existing workers and attract new workers. The aged care workforce strategy action of implementing new attempts Traction and retention strategies for the workforce is aimed at employee engagement and enablement to better improve attraction, retention and workplace culture in individual organisations across the industry. Greater transparency is required in accreditation of training programs. Industry Reference Committee is committed to review courses at Cert 3 level and Cert, 5 level, uh, Cert 4 level. It was, no, it was noted that the Certificate 3 had not been substantially updated despite significant recent changes in care requirements and that there needed to be core competencies related to personal care and quality of life and wellbeing. Lack of career progression. Reframing the qualification and skills framework. Addressing current and future competencies and skills requirements as part of the Aged Care Workforce Strategy Task Force is enacting action based on two interrelated building blocks, job architecture and modernising and realigning vocational education. Limited focus on aged care specific instructions in some courses, the review of the aged care quality standards will consider appropriate regulatory levers to require providers to ensure staff are appropriately trained. Recognition of prior learning inconsistencies. From 1st of July 2021, the Australian Government have agreed to fast track the development of accredited nationally recognised short courses, skill sets and micro-credentials to the aged care workforce. This course should be designed to improve opportunities for learning and professional development and upgrade skills, knowledge and capabilities of the existing workforce. So I was thinking, guys, that we get rid of these ones because I've just gone over and it was too long initially, but let me know what you think. Students need labour market information such as workforce trends, school requirements and job vacancies to assist them to make informed education and training and career decisions. Here are multiple changes and strategies aimed at aged care. Oh no, that needs to be gone. As, a, as career practitioners, we can form relations with, lo with local aged care services to enhance the importance for high school students to complete work placements and facilities, which can be, which in turn, which can in turn motivate students into the industry that may have previously not shown an interest. We can promote the transferable skills that students will gain from working in the um, industry, aged care industry as a pathway into nursing in a hospital setting. We can promote that care as career practitioners. We can promote that care roles in the occupation projected to have the biggest growth in Australia by 2026. Therefore, the availability and availability and choice of work will be in an abundance, including the ability for students to be able to travel within the industry, encouraging male, encouraging male students into the industry. The RAC Centre has critically important work. It has that has proven is a critically important workforce. The demand in this industry is only going to increase given Australia's ageing population. Changes such as those involving technology will lead to the creation of new jobs and the need for different skills in existing jobs. In order to understand such changes in the world of work and identify big picture trends that are shaping our workforce, it is essential to draw on labour market information. Um, to draw on labour market information. Okay, finished. References.